Hello, I'm making a short video about how to connect your 882 to your computer uh, using the Maglog software and diagnostic uh, tool that we put in there. And um, I'm trying to show connectivity as well as whether or not the magnetometer is functional. Okay? So um, the first thing that you need to do is you need to establish what COM port that you're going to be using for your test. So the easiest way to do that and I'm using a Windows 7 computer, is to go to your control panel, and then select your device manager. Okay, and then that populates. So now you can go ahead and open up your COM ports. And for this demonstration, I'm using a single USB uh, adapter right here. So what I'm going to simply do is just plug it into my computer and uh, keep my eyes on my uh, COM port settings here. Okay. And now you can see that nothing changed. So I don't have this COM port turned on. So I'm going to go to my next one. and something changed and you can see that it's telling me my COM port is COM23 so I'm going to note that for my next step okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to close our device manager and then we're going to close the control panel okay and then we're going to go ahead and open up our mag log software okay here's a here's something you need to pay attention to Whenever you open up the software, this message comes up. New program version is available. Your, your version is da 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 beta. Just ignore this message. We're, in the, we're working on getting this message taken off. So I'm going to just simply say no. And then this other message comes up. And it asks, it tells you that your version is older than 365 days. Please consider getting a new version. Again, yeah. let's just ignore this and hit. Yeah. Okay. So now you have the blank mag log screen. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your connections of your equipment. To do the diagnostic survey, you simply need your, deck, junk, your DC data junction box has shown the power cable right here excuse me power cable which we have connected to our small supply and our small supply is just plugged into our, our outlet here and then you're going to use the short test cable that we provide um, part number 258 3 dash one It's a short test cable. And that's simply connected to the short pigtail that's normally encased on the nose assembly of your 882. I removed the nose assembly just for the sake of demonstration, but normally you would have this cable coming out the top. 
So you can simply just connect it that way. And as you can see, this particular uh, magnetometer does have the uh, altimeter ready or an altimeter input as well. But that's not that, that's not necessary to go into for this demonstration right now. Then, of course, we have our regular RS-232 DB9 cable, which is connected now to my USB adapter, which I just demonstrated to you before, the COM port 23 that is used on my computer. Okay. So now we have everything connected and we're going to go ahead and turn the power on to the mag. And then we will open up the maglog software uh, diagnostic survey file. So as you can see, my USB adapter has got a light on it indicating it's got power. And we'll go ahead and flip the on switch on the deck box. We got a green light indicating that everything's powered up and there's no reversal of polarity, which would be hard to do with that supply. And then now we're gonna go over here and take a look at the software. So we wanna go to the file and we're gonna go with continue existing survey. Now, mine pops up with the, diagno with the diagnostic survey file. Yours might not if you haven't done this before. So to locate this file, what you're going to do is we have it stored normally on a normal uh, upload under the C drive. And then you go to Program Files. Open that up. And then we will go to Geometrics folder. Right here. Open that. And then you see we got a number of files here. Folders, excuse me, that will go to diagnostic. Open that. And there is our diagnostic survey file. And then we'll open that. Okay. So now you can see that the software is opened, and if you notice right here, my COM is set at 23, so I got connectivity. If, you're, if you don't have connectivity, you might need to back out and change your COM settings using the CM201 program. But that's, you need to make sure that your COM port matches what you had, what you had determined as your COM port um, when you did that e earlier exercise. Okay, so let me back off a little bit and so you can see the full screen. So in the uh, diagnostic survey file, um, there, what, the, what the instrument does is it turns on all the channels. And if you look at the document that uh, is available uh, that I'll send to you, if, we, if you don't have it already or it's in the manual, you'll see what's allowable numbers here, okay? Um, what happens is that after 15 minutes or so, the instrument stabilizes, and you should get uh, numbers that um, that follow within the parameters that are set in that document. Okay, um, as you can see right now, our magnetometer reading is jumping all over, and that's because my colleague Mike is over here working with some tools, and he's actually getting a magnetometer ready for a a, a lease order that he's doing. Um, normally, if you had this magnetometer set out on a plastic cart as shown and um, off the ground and, of course, elevated, excuse me, oriented uh, properly, for us here in the United States and California where we're at, it's a vertical orientation. For where you're at, it might be best to have it at a 45, okay? This is something that you also need to make sure that you check out using the CSAZ program, um, proper orientation for your location. Um, that's something you might want to look into on the manual as well. And you can see that, you know, I have it in, in our test lab here, and there's a metal cabinet here. And now, now Mike's out of the picture, and you can see how the mag's quieting down some. Okay. 
okay? Notice this is our signal, which is important. We want a signal to be uh, between 800 and, and 1500 after the mag's got a chance to settle down. And then um, please refer to the documents for the actual numbers. These numbers here are going to fluctuate, okay, as the instrument warms up. That's why it's important to give it at least 15 minutes before you start um, uh, looking at the numbers to ver verify whether or not it's a, uh, the mag's functional or not, okay? So, and you can see over here, I've got data coming in as my USB is, uh, uh, adapter is indicating. And that's pretty much it. So you see our signal level is actually coming back down um, uh, as, as the uh, brightness value, which should be around 12 volts when the instrument stabilizes, comes down. Our RF effort should be, low, be below 5 volts and our heater around 1.2. We want to see this to be around about where it's at and then this also should be about where it's at. So these are all numbers that you look at. Um, these, two, these two columns here aren't, aren't really something that we pay too much attention into because this is our pressure and our pressure obviously is set right now at um, open. It's, it's open to uh, the atmosphere, so it should be close, to, close enough to zero. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of an offset that might need, might need to be dealt with, uh, on, uh, adjusted on the counter card. And then this altimeter is going to no, normally be around 100 with no altimeter connected. Okay, but primarily this, what this is used for is to verify that you got good signal level here. And that your um, that you got the the, uh, the brightness and the RF uh, that you want to see in the heater. Okay, so this is the primary function that that we use the diagnostic tool for, especially when customers are trying to figure out whether or not their mag is working um, before they start doing some um, survey work. And whenever whenever I get a call or an email about a magnetometer, this is what I direct my customers to do first and we can try to determine whether or not there is an issue with the mag okay that's that's a quick tutorial on doing the, the diagnostic survey oh yeah one last thing I you could always do is you could always come up here and you can make a re recording okay and you, just by doing that and then it's logging and then wait however long you want to and then you can stop logging and now you have this information here in a file one of the things that's one way of doing it or simply you can just do a screen capture and capture these these values as well and that would be one way of sending information to geometrics to uh, take a look and see how your mags operating okay so real quick recap diagnostic survey Verify COM port settings. Make sure you have the instrument elevated off the ground, sensor oriented proper for your location, and sitting on something non-ferrous like a plastic cart. And then you should get some decent numbers, okay? All right, thank you.